Hello friends, welcome to Core Semantic and welcome to the video tutorial of ASP.NET Web API. So this video is all about how to test Web API and what are the tools are available and which tool we are going to use for testing our Web API. So let us start. So first of all, we will understand the necessity of Web API testing. So API testing is also a kind of software testing that aims to determine whether APIs that are developed to meet the required functionality, performance, re reliability, and the security of an application. So as of now, all of you knew that Web API do not have any user interface. So it is very hard to test a Web API. Okay. And that's why there are many third party tools are available, which are helpful to test the Web API because we have to test it thoroughly before it will be consumed by any other client. Now, all of you know that the client of Web API can be a web application, can be a mobile app or any IoT device. So definitely before consuming by that applications, we have to thoroughly test it. So let us see what are the tools available in the market. So there are many Web API testing tools. I listed few of them like Postman, Fiddler, Rest Assured, JMeter, APG. Fiddler is not just Web API testing tool. We can do lots of things with a Fiddler. But one of the feature of Fiddler is that you can test Web API using it. So here I'm going to focus on Postman tool. Okay. So in upcoming session, whenever we are going to create a web api we will test it using postman tool so let us see little bit more about postman tool so postman is a powerful http client for testing web apis it offers smooth user interface to test an api functionality so besides http client uh, it also offers many other functionality but primarily we are going to use it as an http client so initially uh, postman used to come as an add-on or extension tool in google chrome but now it is a separate application and it comes in the form of desktop application or in the web version also so depending on your requirement you can install it uh, even paid and free versions are available the main important features of postman is that it is having a simple user interface and it supports all the http methods now let us see some more things related to postman installation so the first thing is that uh, from where you can download the postman so this is the link postman.com slash downloads so i'll mention this link in the description below so from this location you can download the postman and here you can see this this is a postman app which is a desktop app so you can download it on your machine uh, depending on your operating system so mine is windows so i'm going i installed this version so based on your operating system you can install it it is available for mac os linux and everything and even you can try the web version also so just you have to sign up for the free uh, definitely you will get a limited functionality for but for web, web api developer these functionalities are sufficient so i am going to use the desktop application i already downloaded it and installed it so after installation it looks something like this uh, you can see this icon so you have to double click on this icon so after opening it it looks something like this so i already created one workspace and i named it as code semantic so you can create a workspace from this option okay and whenever means definitely we need to send a request and we need to see the response in web api so what you have to do uh, besides this overview tab just click on this plus sign one more tab will appear here 
and with the help of this tab you can send the request and you can view the response so basically uh, this entire window get divided into three section so here we can see different options okay there are multiple things you can create a mock servers you can create a different environments and many things are there but here for our purpose i'm going to focus on this history icon only it shows you all the old request that you have made then on right hand side part it is divided into two section the upper section is for request and the lower section is for response so if you want to send any request definitely you have to first of all choose the http method generally we use only four methods get post put and delete but there are multiple methods available here so it as i told you postman generally supports all the http methods so whenever you want to make any request you first of all select the http method or http verb then you have to specify the url and if your url or request needs any parameters or input in the form of query string you can mention it here even if needs any information or input in the form of body you can mention it here okay if you want to specify any headers headers related information like accept content type anything like this you can mention it here so default configuration is present here in the form of qe value pair you can mention rest of the things so it is quite easy to use this kind of inter interface and you can view the response in the below section in this section you can view the response so it is very easy and very simple user interface but definitely uh, remember one thing i didn't show you the part related to sign up and everything so whenever you download it while installation or after installation it will ask you for sign up definitely it is a free sign up and you can uh, reliably use it so what we will do uh, now whatever existing application that we have created in the previous uh, videos we will test it using postman okay till now we tested it in the browser only okay and if you observe carefully you might notice that i only specified the get request i didn't created the post request and so uh, i didn't test it because in browser we have that limitation we can test the get request but we can't test the post request using browser okay so here i'll show you how to test the post request as well so let us switch to visual studio so i am using the same web api application that we created last time so we have a product controller which is having two get request one is accepting parameter and the another one is not accepting anything the first get request method is returning all the products whereas the second get request is returning the specified product whatever id we have given so basically our id can range from 0 to 3 and if our id is invalid at that time we are returning some status code so all this thing we are going to test it in the postman so uh, to run your local host web api you have to keep it in a running state otherwise you can't test it so first of all run this application so we will get a port number we have to specify it there so port number is 60562 again i'll switch to visual studio and i'm switching to web api config.cs file so i'm just revising this so basically how we have to make a request we have to specify local host port number okay then after we have to specify the api keyword or api word which is fixed here constant here we have to specify it as it is you can change this word as you want it's not necessary that this word should be api it can be anything then here next to api two placeholders are mentioned why i'm calling it as a placeholder because 
they are enclosed in curly braces and it can take any value so basically the first placeholder will be the name of controller and next placeholder is a parameter name so here our parameter or root parameter is id and if you observe it here carefully our argument name is also id so purposely we are keeping this same uh, because we didn't study a routing part yet that's why i kept this root parameter name and my action method parameter name c okay so i hope uh, this is clear to you now let us switch to browser again i'll copy this local host then switch to postman okay then here i have to specify the api and then after i have to specify my controller name you need not to mention the action method name because our http methods are mapped to action methods in the controller so my method is get so let us say send you have to click on this button and here you can see the response okay so here you can see the status code as well which is 200 okay because in the code what we said written okay and we are returning the list of products so this method returns the status code also which you can see here okay now here by default uh, the response is in the form of json suppose you need it in the html form sorry uh, if you need it in the xml form what you have to do uh, you have to override this accept header okay actually we can't change it from here okay so we have to override it so in the form of key you will mention it accept and in the value section you will say application slash xml again say send now you will get your data in the xml format okay so it's quite easy to test different representation format that our web api can return okay even we can specify the content type also uh, in case if we are uh, providing input to our web api so as we move ahead in the upcoming session we are going to see that part also okay so now the next thing is that we want to test this second action method which is accepting the parameter so what you have to do since this is our root parameter i can directly mention it like this slash one so my first product is actually washing machine this is zero this is first this is second and this is third so let us say send so i get this now in the header section suppose i remove this and if i again say send i'll get a data in the json format and here also you can observe it it is giving me the data in the json format and as well as the status code okay even you can check the response time and everything here okay now again i'll switch to this params tab suppose instead of this if you want to mention it something like this my parameter name is id and its value is say zero so send it returns t so you can mention it in this form also in the form of query string now i'll mention the invalid id let us see what output we will get now just observe the status code now it is 200 and we got the output also now say send okay it returns 404 not found because the same code we have written right if id is between 0 and 3 then only we are returning that product otherwise we are returning not found so in postman it is very easy to identify the status code and response and everything and even it is very easy to provide the input in the graphical user interface okay now uh, we didn't try the post request yet so what will i do i'll just create a simple post request and we will test it here so let us switch to visual studio let me stop my application 
so let us write one post method so i already wrote it i am just going to paste it over here so as per the convention i am starting the name with post word okay uh, you can avoid this convention but in that case you have to use http verb attribute here it is accepting one parameter name and here i am just checking if my name is not empty or null in that case i am concatenating that name with hello and otherwise i am returning the bad request okay so let us test this so after your application is up so we already have that localhost copied i am just switching to postman so the next important thing you have to do is select the proper method so we are testing post method so select post verb or post http method and then here we have to specify the parameter right the parameter name is name and let us say smith and say send okay so we got the message hello smith and response or status code is 200 that is okay now if i do not pass any name in that case it should return bad request because now my name is what empty i am providing i am i mentioned the key or i mentioned the parameter but i didn't provide the value but if i didn't mention anything in that case this is totally a different error message because it is not able to map this url to our web api action method okay so that's why this error come so uh, to post method we can pass complex type of data also like object and everything but as we move ahead in upcoming sessions we are going to see that part in more detail so i hope you enjoy this video and if you have any doubts or any comments you can write it to the comment section thank you for watching